Hello guys. I thought I would do a little get to know me because I haven't really done an update on just myself, just general who I am on this channel in years. I put up like a question box on Instagram stories and you guys had some questions that you wanted some answers to. So that would go through those. Basic stuff. My name's Amelia, obviously. 28. I live in Exeter in Devon. I am engaged to Joel, who's from Wales. I'm originally from Somerset, Joel's from Wales. We've been together for seven years and we've got a dog, Cedric, who's a working cocker cross golden retriever and we've got a baby, a little boy who's five months old and we call him Moose, but that's not his name obviously. So let's go through these questions. Tips for plant-based eating on a small budget and easy meals. I've actually got a series coming out about this soon, which is called Four Pounds, Four Portions. Um, so that's gonna be really helpful for people who wanna eat plant-based on a budget, because I feel like plant-based eating can be made out to be really expensive and it's not. I think when you kind of start adding in the meat alternatives, like the, the fake meat, that's when it can get really expensive. I think stick to whole foods. That's the way to keep it cheap. Uh, vegetables, grains, lentils, um, tins of chickpeas. Like you could get a tin of chickpeas for 50p. But it's herbs and spices, isn't it? I think, yeah, like you can do it for cheap. I think just stick to whole grains, stick to whole foods. Don't buy into like pre-packaged meals. That's when it gets expensive. That would be my biggest tip. Okay, birth story. Did you end up getting induced? I had a baby at the same time as also late. And I had someone else ask this. I remember you being overdue with Moo. Were you induced? I wish I had asked for induction after being overdue. Little disclaimer, don't watch what I'm about to say if you're having a baby anytime soon. Just don't. Stick to the side of the internet where you feel bright and happy and confident because I was going to, going into labour so confident and ready to take on the challenge and excited. If that's the zone you're in now, please, please, please skip the next couple of minutes. Um, if you've already had a baby and you were induced, then you might want to watch this because it'll feel relatable. But basically, yes, I was induced and it was painful, not gonna lie. Um, so I went right up to 42 weeks and at about 41 plus four, we started talking to our midwife about, you know, am I gonna need to be induced? Those two weeks were the hardest part of my entire pregnancy, just going overdue was so hard overdue. It's not even like an actual date, it's an estimate. Every night, every day, I'd wake up and go to sleep and be like, is it gonna be, is it gonna be tonight? Is it gonna be today? And it just never happened. And it was so disheartening because I was really excited for that like, <gasps> it's happening now and it just never came. I found that really mentally challenging. Everyone would you know, be texting me and calling me like, oh, what's happening? And I'm like, nothing. We were actually planning a home birth. I really wanted a home birth. I wanted a water birth. Didn't happen either of those. Day I was 42 weeks. That morning we got a call from the hospital saying, we've had a slot open up, would you like to come in and be induced today? And um, we said, yes, please. And so we kind of got our bits together. Uh, we went for a last dog walk. We went to Tesco's to get snacks. And then we went into the hospital. And Joel was allowed to stay with me until the evening. And I was induced at three. I had no symptoms, no pains, no nothing until I went to sleep at about 11 and I woke up at two in the morning in so much pain called the midwife I was like you need to get Joel in like this this is moving fast and really frustratingly they didn't believe I was in labour and this seems to be a really common story I, I love the NHS don't get me wrong I am so grateful for every single midwife uh sonographer uh anesthesiologist everything physiotherapist i've had such an amazing experience but this one midwife just didn't believe i was in labor which was really frustrating so i labored entirely on the ward like with other people around which was not very nice and i could have been in a private room in a pool if i would kind of maybe pushed for it if they believed i was in labor anyway eight o'clock in the morning comes around and i grab joel and i'm like oh my god i need to push you need to get some, like get some help and then they rushed me over to labour ward. I was in a private room then. 
and my midwife turned out to be one of my old friends which was really nice I was starting to go into labor like like push down labor and I see this face and she's like hello do you want me to take over here and I was like yes please and it was an old friend of mine which was really lovely so she delivered my baby um which is really nice because we've met up since and she gets to like see Mui which is really sweet yeah I did it on gas and air um he was nine pounds and he came out in one go and it was very very painful and I do not look forward to doing it again but it's worth it keeping it real don't want to pretend like it's all beautiful because it's not it wasn't for me it can be for some people right next question what's your fave time of year autumn I used to be a summer girl but now it's autumn I think since having a baby my hormones have changed and I can't hack the summer anymore I don't like being hot it's sweaty it's sticky it's hard work with a baby and it's annoying autumn is great Baby clothes in autumn are the best. Autumn time for me is best because I get to just cover up in a big, like, cosy sweater. I love seeing the leaves change. I'm excited for next summer when Bubs is, like, able to interact with his environment more. But this year, he was obviously, like, a newborn over summer. And it was really hard going out or doing anything because he was so tiny and it was so hot. So yeah, autumn. What helps you get through yours and Moosey's colds? Nothing. Soup. Soup. Honey, lemon and ginger tea, uh, Sambucol, I'll always have some Sambucol at home. Um, vitamin wise, I'll always take vitamin D, zinc and iron if I feel like I'm coming down. Iodine, not iron. I eat a lot of apples and I just eat loads of vegetables, just loads of plants, just absolutely loads of fruit and veg. Okay, these two are kind of related. How do you find time to cook, film, edit, etc.? And also, managing a household with a baby is hard. How do you manage? Does your partner help? I think the only way I've managed to get into a really good routine is through habit stacking and through like like starting out with a slow routine and then adding things on rather than like jumping in crazy with a like, right, Monday, 8 a.m., crazy new routine, let's go. Like, no, that's, that's not gonna work. My partner works full time in a very stressful, very important job. And I have to do a lot of the house stuff. He helps so much considering how much he works. Um, I'd say it's maybe like 60, 40 in terms of like household stuff, but he pays our bills. So like pretty fair. I also work full time, like full time. I run my Instagram, I run my YouTube, my TikTok, my website, all those bits. So I went back to this work when I was eight weeks postpartum. So the way it works is on Mondays, I'll film my YouTube. And normally that would be things that I do with the baby. Um, I have the baby all the time, so I'm, I look after him as a full-time mum. But on Tuesdays, either my mum or Joel will take a day off their jobs to watch the baby so that I can have a day of filming. Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, I have the baby again full-time. And I've got some baby classes I go to. Every Thursday and every Friday, I've got a baby class I go to at lunchtime, which is really nice. One of them is a fitness class. Um, and one of them's a baby sensory class. Um, so I just try and edit when he naps. But I don't know how I find the time, to be honest, with difficulty. Um, and managing a household, we do the close down shift in the evening where, you know, tidy out the kitchen, keeping things tidy throughout the day as well is a huge help. In the morning, first thing I do, I wake up, I come downstairs, I put the baby in his chair, I make myself some breakfast and I empty the dishwasher. And then throughout the rest of the day, everything that's dirty can go into the dishwasher, so it's not just stacking up on the side. Every evening when we cook, we cook enough for the next day. And every evening we do a load of laundry and put away the laundry from the night before. Actually, that's a lie. We don't put, ever put away the laundry. We're awful at putting away the laundry. Yeah, it's hard. It just is hard. My partner does help. He's amazing. He's amazing. But I think starting off small with a routine and adding to it. Oh, this is a nice one. Favourite part of being a mummy? Oh, I don't even know where to start. I love it. I just love it. It's the best. Um, I think seeing him grow and develop and like one day he's not doing something and then the next day all of a sudden he can sit or roll or like smile. Oh, I have this little moment whenever we're in, he's in the pram and we're just out and about where I'll look down at him and as soon as he make eye, makes eye contact, he'll grin with me and it's lush. And he doesn't do it with people, he does it with me. And it's like me and him are in on this secret that no one else knows and I love it. And I just, yeah, trying to cherish every second, I suppose. It's hard, don't get me wrong. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. 
but it gets so much better as they get a little bit older. The newborn stage sucks. I hated the newborn stage. I don't even care if you're not allowed to say that. It was rough. I hurt. He doesn't know where he is. Like, you don't, every little thing is worrying. You're like, oh my God, he's had a poo. Is he okay? Like, yeah, of course. And now they're, they get so much stronger as they get older and you can just trust them a bit more. Where do you shop for your clothes? I love your laid back coastal vibe. So, top brands for jeans, Abercrombie. I'm wearing them today, actually. These jeans, these are Abercrombie. Um, free people. I love free people, but on vintage because no one can afford free people, let's be real. I love their everything actually. I love their tees, I love their trousers, I love their coats. So, so, so nice. Shop out on vintage, try shops. I like a piece from Urban Outfitters here and there. I'm not a big ASOS person. I love the idea because I love the idea of just doing a haul and trying stuff on. Just not a big ASOS person. I quite like Hollister, actually. Don't like Zara at all. I love Zara kids, hate Zara women. It just doesn't fit my body shape. I don't know why. I always come out feeling really bad about myself, so I just don't shop there. Free People, Hollister, Abercrombie, Vinted. How have you found it adding animal products to your diet? I have found it really good. So I added in eggs and fish, and I feel really good for it. It's opened up my world to a lot more options um it's helped me feel better and helped me get in easier protein i was finding that i was like insatiable without animal protein insatiable um i would eat a fully balanced meal with tofu and beans and whole grains and vegetables and healthy fats uh, you know i'm a nutrition student i know what i'm doing with food i was so hungry and I would be pairing my amino acids to get a complete balanced amino acid profile. And I was just, nothing was filling me up. There was like a kind of pit in my stomach where I was so hungry. And for me, animal protein satiated that. So I don't know what that is. Um, but that's that's how I found it. And that's how it's helped for me. And also I kind of realised that for me, going vegan in the first place was actually not healthy it was a form of restricting my food and controlling my diet it wasn't coming from a good place it was coming from a place of trying to limit myself which was just feeding into negative food thoughts releasing that weight has been really freeing for me i didn't used to have the best relationship with food there was another question about this actually do you have tips on how to avoid binge eating so i definitely used to do this i did not have a good relationship with food i'd restrict and binge and restrict and binge i did a bit of inner work and i kind of you know challenge these thoughts and I started to kind of slow down my meal times and enjoy my food. I think when I realised I wanted to become a mum I was like I can't carry on like this, this has got to change. I cannot raise a baby that's going to watch me view food this way. So yeah when I decided I wanted to become a mum I was like I need to I need to address this which was you know worked out really great because then a couple of months later I got pregnant so there you go. So now I don't have any restricted thoughts around food. None at all, which I'm so blessed to be able to say. I'm so lucky to feel that way. Um, it took a lot of work. It took a few years. I think the baby's awake. Baby's awake. Where were we? Do you work full time as a content creator? Do you work full time with your Instagram page? Yeah, this is my full time job. I did not watch out the window. There you go. Let's hide you from world yeah this is my full-time job been my full-time job for years now for maybe like two or three years i have a manager um i make my money through brand deals through like ads on my instagram page through hopefully one day youtube that is my goal um and a little bit through um ad revenue on my website so if ever you support me i really really appreciate it because it genuinely pays my bills it puts clothes on movies back it feeds us it is my income um i do get really scared that one day it won't be because i love how much freedom it gives me with him and with hopefully future babies one day um and i don't know what else i do because i love doing this and i don't want to do anything else it, it speaks to all the different sides of me that i enjoy the creative side the side that loves photography the side that loves food if i ever didn't do this i'd either do something within this just for someone else or <laughs> My in another life job, I'd love to be the person that edits um, trailers for films. <laughs> I've always loved that. I'd love to work in TV, to be honest. I really love TV, especially like natural history and wildlife and all that kind of stuff. But I love living out in the middle of nowhere. 
So I don't think I would ever be able to relocate to like London or anywhere like that. Big city life just isn't for me. Where do you get your film developed, please? Snappy snaps. There you go. Where can I find the sleep tips for the baby? I just really need them. Sending you love. I know that feeling. It was the last YouTube I posted, I think, or the one before. I'll link it so you can find it. Where did you and your partner meet? This is a fun one. We met in Portugal. Um, I left home when I was 18 and went traveling. Not like left home because I didn't get on with my mum. I love my mum. Um, I just wanted to go traveling. I went traveling. I did America. I did New York to San Fran and like via buses and trains and stuff and stopped off at loads of places along the way. Then I went to Fiji, then I went to Australia, came home and worked for a bit and then I went out again to Thailand, Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia. Then I did Indonesia and then I came home, worked for a bit and a friend of mine was going on a ski season so I was like you know I'll tag along so I went on ski season and while I was on ski season I made friends with someone who told me about a job in Portugal. So I went to this job in Portugal and I was there for three or four weeks and it was really funny because it was a proper gut instinct that was telling me to go to Portugal because I was planning on going to Hawaii and I had this gut instinct to go to Portugal. I was like, okay, I'll go to Portugal. Don't know why I want to go to Portugal, but let's just go to Portugal. And three weeks later, I met Joel. So we had a friend who was a drummer in a band. Joel was working in the bar above where the drummer, our friend was playing and he came downstairs and very naughty, I uh, smoked cigarettes at the time and I asked him for a lighter and he didn't even look twice at me and I was like, damn, that was my big move. That was me like trying to get in. Um, and then I saw him a couple of days later in a bar and we had a mutual friend and I asked our mutual friend to introduce us. I was like, mm, I think he's fit. Can you like introduce us? And he did and we stayed up all night talking and then went and got breakfast the next morning. And we haven't been apart ever since that night, actually. Um, that was seven years ago. And the day we met is our anniversary because we genuinely haven't been apart since. Neither of us dated anyone else or anything. We just, from the get, we were together. He was living out there in Portugal, had been for a couple of years. And I was supposed to be going to uni in Manchester. Um, and I was like, you know, come with me. And he did. And the rest is history. And then we did some more traveling. We went to Canada. We went to... Um, Malaysia, we've done a lot of Europe, and now we're on the greatest adventure ever. But we'll definitely be doing more traveling once this one's a bit bigger. Where do you think your love of wholesome good food stem from? That's a really good question. I just love good food, but I'm not like a good food as in fine dining, that's not me. I love deli foods, like homemade coleslaws and like whole grain salads and like tapas and uh like hummus and dips and crudite and like like healthy buffet deli style that is like my ultimate ultimate food i think from going from a view of restrictive eating i now i'm like wow look at all these things i can have um i think it's just so freeing it's yeah people come together over food i love it what hair products do you use mine never grows past a certain length mine never used to grow past a certain length either it used to only grow to here and now it, it's got so long. Um, find a good hairstylist that trusts in your hair. And brands, Way, Virtue, Davinus. Those are the only brands I use. So I'll link some below and you can have a little look at the ones I use. Um, I literally used to have like short dark hair and I always wanted long blonde hair. And now like my hairdresser is amazing. She's got us here. Um, and I would literally, yeah, I will be going to her for the rest of my life because she's so good. What makeup brands do you use? Um, I use a mineral foundation powder. I think my, I used to have really bad skin and I invested some time and money into going to a clinic and finding the right products that work for me. And I did a treatment of like six uh, like peels over 12 weeks. And that was the best thing I've ever done for my skin. I used to have such bad congested skin and now it's been fine ever since going to them and keeping up with the products they use. Right, well thank you very much for watching guys, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day and thanks for asking those questions. But yeah, thanks for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.